Daniel Zalero here. Noise is one of the biggest things that we deal with in astrophotography. So today I'm going to show you a denoising technique in PixInsight that I learned from astrophotographer John Riesta. Let's get started. All right, so I've got my image of M51 open. It's already been stacked and I've already done dynamic background extraction on it. Now the two processes that we're going to be using today is TGV denoise and also multi-scale median transform. All right, now we're also going to be using a little bit of curves transformation, uh, histogram transformation, and you also need RGB working space. So if you want to open those processes, um, if you're going to be going along with me, um, you'll want to do that. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a luminance copy of this image. So we're going to first open RGB working space and we're going to put all of our uh, red, green and blue coefficients to maximum. What we're doing here is we're making sure that all of the luminance data is equal when we make our luminance copy. So we'll apply RGB working space to our image and then there's a little tab up here called extract CIEL or luminance component. So we'll click that. Now what we need to do is we need to do apply a permanent um, screen transfer function stretch to this. So let's maximize it here and then um, do an auto stretch on it. So in order to do this, grab our triangle from screen transfer function down to histogram. And then we're going to drag the histogram triangle onto the image and then reset screen transfer. All right. So now, this image has been permanently stretched. Now it's important to understand this, the denoising that we're doing today is actually gonna be done on linear data, data that has been unstretched. That's what's so cool about this denoising technique is a lot of denoising techniques you have to do after you've already permanently stretched the image, but this can be done before we stretch it. That way when we do start stretching the image, we're avoiding um, stretching some of that background noise. You can also apply some of these techniques a little bit after stretching as well, but this will be done before a permanent stretch. Okay, so we've got our luminance data here. That's gonna be used for TGV denoise later on. Now we need to make another mask here so let's go ahead before we do that let's label this <clears throat> let's label this as the luminance loom okay now let's click and drag to make another copy here and we're gonna uh, label this tgv denoise all right um I'll go ahead and maximize it now, we need to go ahead and uh, what we're going to do to this image is we're going to try to even out the luminance data. We're going to try to make the darks and the bright areas a little bit more flat looking. So we're going to open up curves transformation. You can see I've kind of already got it set here, but uh, I'm going to reset it to show you what I do. So you can click down here and drag this point. And what we want is uh, the output to be around uh, 0.2. And then we want the output on this side to be around 0.5. And you can play with this um, and, and understand that a lot of the things that we'll be doing here today are going to require a little bit of experimentation, really just depending on every single image. But this is a general, as a general rule, these are good. Uh, 0.2 over here, 0.5 there. Then what we're gonna do is just apply it. So you can tell it made our image a lot flatter. Now we need to get out histogram transformation and we're gonna hit track. And then uh, what we need to do is grab, so I hit reset there. We need to grab our midpoint slider. What we want is this peak to be around the 50% mark here. So let's grab that drag it backwards and see it's around 50% and then we're going to apply that. Okay. So we've got a, a brighter, brighter image overall for, uh, um, I just noticed I wrote TGB denoise. Oh, well, doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so we've, we've kind of got a flat image there. Now, while we're here, we're going to go ahead and make the mask for, um, multi median, uh, scale, multi, multi scale median transform, say it right. Um, so let's make a copy of this because what we're going to do, let's reset this is basically just 
drag it up from 50% up to about 75% and then apply it to this. All right. So, and this is important, this next part. For both of the TGV mask and the, uh, let's relabel this one, and also the um, multi-median, multi-scale, multi-scale median transform, I'll say, I'll get it right eventually. We need to invert both of these. Now there's two ways you can do that. You can either just invert the actual whole image or you can invert the mask. I like to invert the image because sometimes when I apply the mask, I forget to um, hit that little invert button. So I'm just gonna go ahead and invert both of these images. Um, on Mac, it's uh, Command I. I think on PC, it's Control I. All right, now on this loom, um, one though, we're just gonna leave it as is. We haven't done anything to it except apply permanent stretch and that's exactly how we want it. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize some of my, my windows here. We're gonna open, let's go ahead and place these on the side so they're out of the way and um, we can clearly see what we're doing over here. Perfect, all right, now, Let's open up TGV Denoise. First thing, um, I like to use the CIE um, uh, Luminance the Lab mode. Um, it does, and a lot of people seem to have that same preference, works better than the RGB uh, K mode. So you wanna click there. Now we're gonna wanna click Local Support. And what we're gonna apply here is that uh, loom data just the simple permanently stretched loom data that's what's going to be applied there that helps TGV denoise differentiate between um, the bright and the dark areas of the photo all right now what we want to do is to apply to the actual image our TGV denoise mask so uh, you know I've got it flat stretched out and did all that stuff and then I've got it inverted so we're just going to click and drag over to apply the mask. All right. So you can tell it's masked. What we're going to want to do is um, basically show hide. I like to hide the mask so we can see what we're doing. Next up, it's important that we do this to make um, some previews. Now, what you want to do is you want to make some small previews, just a few. I usually like to make it around a blank spot with just background. Then I kind of like to make it to where we can see some of this tail coming off galaxy here let's get a combination here of a bright area like say the middle of the galaxy and the dark area right next to it so we can see that contrast it's important to to use previews because this process does take quite a while to run but if you run it on a small preview it goes a lot shorter so you could make your adjustments a lot quicker before applying it to the whole image now typically uh, let me reset this so you can see what it looks like in its original mode so click lab mode here this minus three right here is going to typically be way too strong so we want to maybe start around minus five on both of them you can click between lightness and chrominance so lightness is literally just adjusting the noise on the the brightness of the image whereas chrominance is going to deal with all of that color noise in the background oh I hit reset so I'm gonna to have to reselect my uh, my loom data here now let's go ahead and go to our preview one and what we're gonna do is just uh, apply this just as it is I, I do want to note with the strength and the smoothness I don't usually mess with those. You're going to get the biggest changes and results uh, by adjusting this edge protection option here. Starting off, leave it at iterations of 100. So let's go ahead and apply and see what happens. All right, you can tell that is way too much. You can do your, uh, your back and forth on your preview to see the difference. So that's going to be far too much. Let's go up a level to minus six which is it's kind of backwards thinking but the minus higher you get the lower the actual number is let's apply that on both and let's reapply this and see what happens okay we're getting a little bit closer but you can tell it's still just it looks like there's less noise but it just something looks off about it it looks kind of plasticky looking that's something that we want to avoid you don't want to over denoise your your images so let's go up one more on 
the lightness and the chrominance. Apply and see what happens. Ah, okay, much more subtle. Let me zoom in a little bit. As you can tell it looks just a tad softer. Okay, now one thing I've noticed, let's go ahead and bump up that chrominance. Let's go down a level, back higher, basically, on that chrominance and see if that changes some of the uh, color noise levels. Yeah, you can see it looks a little bit softer. Let's go ahead and look at some of these other previews and see how that looks on these. Yeah, just a tad softer. And apply it on this one. Okay. Let's try to add just a little bit more lightness on this area. So instead of adjusting this back down, we can actually increase it just a bit more by using this slider here. So we'll increase it from two to four and see what happens. All right, back and forth. So you can see a difference there. It's not too bad. Remember to go easy with it. The multi-scale median transform that we're going to use in a minute will, I think you'll see a bigger difference there. But we want to be careful. Now I'm not going to spend too much time. I usually spend a lot more time trying to get just everything dialed in perfectly. It does take some experimentation and some patience to get this right. But for now, I'm going to stick with that. One thing that, that we can do is when you're applying it to the whole images, change the iterations to 500. So what I'll do is I'll apply this and, uh, Meet you back here in a minute when it's done. Okay, we're back. Process is finished. Now, before I move on, I want to let you know that I'm working on a video that will take you through all of the processes I use in PixInsight from a stacked raw image to a completed photo. So keep your eyes out for that and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you're liking this video, then hit the like button. Let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit and kind of do a before and after and see yeah you can definitely tell it's it's possible i maybe went a little too far on that um but that's all right like i said i'm not really gonna dial it in perfection for the tutorial you'll want to spend some more time doing that all right let's move on to um the next thing now we need to remove our mask uh, don't forget to do that so remove that mask now we're going to apply the MMT mask, um, making sure, of course, we've, we've done our proper adjustments to it. It's inverted, so click and drag. Our mask is now applied. Um, of course, already disabled, but you can clearly see that it's there. Now, multi-scale median transform. This allows us to manipulate the data in the pixels on a, on a layer scale level. For this, we're gonna wanna make sure that we're in dyadic. We're gonna select the full eight layers here. And then for each of these layers, we're going to create a noise reduction with a, a threshold. First off, select your first layer, click noise reduction, and we're gonna raise this first one here to two. And the second one will also be at two. Three will be at 2.5, four. Keep double clicking and disabling it. Four here. Four is going to be at um, a five threshold. Five will also be at a five threshold. Six will be at a 7.5. Seven is going to be at a 10. And eight is going to be at a 10. Okay, now we're going to apply this. We really don't need the previews for this. Let's go ahead and delete these. Um, because once it calculates for the image, it doesn't matter that you have a preview or not. Now we can go ahead and zoom in though, so that we can see what it's doing. And we're gonna apply this in uh, two, two different ways. Um, RGB and K, that's a, that would be an application for both the color and the light data all at once, but we don't wanna do that. We're gonna apply it um, to chrominance first before we do the luminance. 
All right, so the chrominance is gonna help us get rid of some of that color noise that we've got in the background. Let's go ahead and apply this. And you can clearly see, when we go back and when we go forward, that a lot of that color noise is gone. So why that works, basically, like I said, each of these layers is working on a, a, a size scale with like levels one and two being the very, very finest of noise, level three, four, five, kind of being mid-size stuff, uh, and then six, seven, and eight are gonna be more large-scale stuff. So that's why with these these thresholds, we wanna get rid of you know some of this large-scale chrominant stuff, but when it comes down to some of the very, very fine noise, we don't wanna completely eliminate fine noise. If you've ever accidentally over-denoised an image where you got rid of all of that really fine noise detail the image just doesn't look right it, it looks plasticky it looks fake so having some of that fine noise left in the image is going to make your image look more natural that's what we're trying to preserve so i'd say that that looks pretty good now let's go ahead and change this down here to the luminance now with the chrominance usually we just apply it one time uh, luminance depending on how much how much it does we may apply it once we may apply it twice or like i said depending on the image we may even decide that we don't want we want to change these thresholds a little bit lower and only apply it one time experimentation is key here every image is different so that's one of the biggest things you need to learn with pix insight is experimentation with some of these tools and some of these settings change some of them a little bit and see what happens because that's how you're going to learn and that's how you're going to learn what what works best now one thing I'm going to do, and this is kind of a little trick here, instead of making a preview, we can actually click and drag this down here, and it makes a preview of the entire image. And the reason why I like to do that sometimes is because instead of having to literally apply it in the history and do the backwards, uh, the undo and redo, with preview, it's just only applying to that preview and you can use uh, shift command Z or shift control Z, I think on the PC to kind of go back and forth, blink back and forth and see the difference. All right, so let's go ahead and apply this and we'll see what happens. Okay, so now it's processed that. Let's zoom in a little bit here and uh, go back and forth on our preview to see the difference. You can clearly see it looks quite a bit smoother there. So I, I like that. Let's go ahead and apply um, that to the actual, click back on the actual image and apply it to that. Now, since it's already calculated for a preview, um, it should actually process fairly quickly here. Yep, see? Okay, now let's try applying it one more time. Now that we've applied it to the full image, the preview will show what's been done to the full image. Um, let's go ahead and apply this once more to the preview and see if maybe it does good or maybe it looks like it's gone too far. Oh, I think that's too far. That does not look good. Yep, it looks, um, it looks yucky. So, so let's not go with that. I think that looks fairly good. I think overall our image looks much cleaner. But let's take the actual image, this image, and compare it to the original. So this copy here has been denoised, and this one has not. Let's see. That's the one without denoising, and this is the one that has been denoised. You can tell it looks much smoother. Much, much smoother. Now, let's do a zoom in here and um, drag this over. And if we drag this zoomed one uh, and drag it right here, we'll actually match the views perfectly. So now we can kind of go back and forth between these at a one-to-one -one scale. Yes, so you can clearly see a really big difference there. So this, this technique, remember, it's really important that you experiment. Spend some time fine-tuning some of these things because every image is going to be different. Thanks for watching.